we have a short amount of time to kind of talk about, I think, some very interesting and exciting data in the triple negative uh, subset of patients. And I think we'll start kind of with the treatment of BRCA-associated breast cancer. Um, and we'll, I think there's some very, very exciting data about PARP inhibitors, uh, the Olympiad trial. And we'll start with Joyce. Can you uh, talk a little bit about Olympiad? Sure. Um, we saw it as a plenary dis discussion or a plenary, pre plenary presentation at ASCO, you know, immediately followed by publication in New England Journal of Medicine by Mark Robson um, in germline BRCA1-2 individuals with metastatic breast cancer who were randomized to one of three chemotherapy agents, capecitabine, venerelbine, or aribulin versus olaparib. And the study met its primary endpoint of progression-free survival um, with a substantial improvement up to over seven months versus around four, four months or so with chemotherapy. No improvement um, yet, at least in overall survival. And uh, patients with um, ER negative breast cancer uh, did, did better than those with uh, ER positive breast cancer. And platinum pretreatment decreased the effectiveness of the uh, Olaparib somewhat, but not entirely. But um, still, I think a very important new tool for our, for our BRCA1-2 germline uh, mutation uh, individual is 60% objective response rate with Olaparib and uh, very, very rapid responses. Um, durability is about six, seven months or so. And, um, in most patients, but uh, very, very massive cyto, cyto reduction. So really interesting, a first step. We, of course, we're all gonna be looking to get that um, uh, immunotherapy uh, involved with it pretty, pretty quickly to see if we can lengthen out the durability of some of those responses. But um, very, very important proof of concept. Tasilisib also was uh, at, um, not Tasilisib, um, Talizoprib. Talizoprib was Otherwise known also as BMN673. Yes. I call it by its oh, number. that's a better right. name. <laughs> I call it by BMN673. I don't call it by yes, Talizoprib. Yes, initially Biomarin and right. um, then Medivation and now Pfizer, Pfizer drug. So the Talizoprib also looked very, very impressive in a phase two study in the, in the germline BRCA, BRCA this patients. This is the Abrazo trial? Uh, yeah. Abrazo, yeah. yes. Can yes. someone describe that? Is there another design? Yeah, we had two cohorts. One was patients who'd received um, three or more lines of therapy and Platinum. one was a patient group who had received platinum therapy and were supposed to not have completely progressed on it, but they had received platinum therapy. Um, and uh, most of the patients really had, you know, disease resistant to platinum. And interestingly, patients responded in both groups. The responses were a little bit higher in the group that had more heavily pretreated and not the exposure to platinum, uh, which is really interesting given the fact that there were progression-free survival in the TNT trial in the BRCA patients who were, tiny number, BRCA patients who received carboplatin compared to the patients who received Olaparib and Olympiad is relatively similar, mm -hmm. uh, suggesting that maybe there's some, uh, you know, we've already seen that there's some similar resistance uh, mechanism that patients who receive high platinum with ovarian cancer have less of a response to PARP inhibitors. And in breast cancer, it seems to be relatively the same. Uh, but uh, they, we saw responses with talizoprib in both groups, and they were reasonably durable as well, which was, uh, I think, quite impressive. So other than, so we have a trial. So the first question of my colleagues, so now at least in, I'm assuming that they'll get label expansion. We don't know, obviously, One in the U.S. Hope. Uh, Europe, I'm assuming they'll get label expansion also. I mean, how will you use, um, how are you guys going to use uh, Olaparib, at least up front? Because that's the one that's going to get approved first. I'll give you an example of a patient of mine who um, triple negative breast cancer, BRCA1 germline mutation, and presented with, um, after some years, presented with a solitary brain metastasis who was, um, that was resected. And I, and I gave her some platinum-based therapy sort of as, a, as an adjuvant, and then I decided I would give it to her as, um, as a maintenance uh, therapy. So I'm using, um, she's on the Olaparib, um, now, but basically, I'm going to go to it probably pretty early on. I think in BRCA1-2 germline mutant metastatic breast cancer, I think it's probably going to be, if not probably first first line treatment for those patients. Yeah, and I have the same experience. I in fact just have a patient with a BRCA2 mutation and ER positive, HER2 positive disease, <laughs> who developed some cardiac toxicity with uh, trastuzumab in the adjuvant setting. Uh, but, you know, with metastatic uh, bone disease, I added Olaparib to her hormone therapy. I think, you know, the thing is that if you, we may get, we have these amazing, you know, doubling of response, but it's not as durable as we'd like. Maybe by treating patients earlier, it will be more durable. 
uh, maybe it will require something else like adjuvant therapy or uh, continuation uh, with and combining with other agents.